Welcome back. Could it be a harbinger of the Texas midterm to come? I'm talking about the stunning outcome in this past week's special election in State Senate District 19. In the Battle of the Peets, Republican Pete Flores knocked off former Congressman Pete Gallegos in a San Antonio area district Democrats have owned for decades. Never mind that that district's previous Democratic Senator Carlos Uresti is heading to prison. The fact remains Hillary Clinton won SD19 by 14 points just two years ago. Question, does this outcome dump cold water on prospects of a blue wave in Texas come November 6th? I'm guessing you think so, Jessica. Wow, what an amazing, amazing victory in SD19 this week. As Lieutenant Governor Patrick said, the tide is out on the blue wave. And let me tell you what, Republicans are fired up for November. This race has ignited the base across Texas. This, not, Greg, you mentioned it, it had been in Democrat hats for decades. It had been in Democrat hands for 139 years. Republicans came in and through sweat equity and hard work, they were outspent. Uh, Pete Flores was outspent in this district. He worked every single county. He went to all 17 counties. The complacency on the Democrat side, taking this race for granted, sitting on the laurels of, uh, of history and thinking that they could just go in and sit by and, and not, you know, their field campaign and their turnout operation, the Republicans beat them on every single front. This was smart strategy. This is what the Republicans are bringing into November. The blue waves out. Okay, Tony. Same old Republican tricks. They found any Hispanic who would work with them. I want to make something clear. This is not a result of Republicans developing talent in our community. They found the only Hispanic who had anything to do with shame, them Tony. to confuse, to confuse Latino it's voters. Shame. It's a Republican trick. It's a racket. And I'll tell you one thing, too. The Democratic candidate did not work hard enough. He left money on the table. He didn't really campaign hard enough. But as far mm. as what this reveals for November, I tell you what, there'll be a political upset. A, a fake Latino with a Spanish surname will lose office because he's not working hard enough to win our votes either. Final word, Bob. I find it interesting that Tony would make racial slurs against us. I'm not racial slurs. It's a shame. Cruz is not Latino. Oh, oh, oh. Don't tell me racial slurs. No, no, no. Don't say that. Do not say that with expect an answer. So you're finish. wrong. You're wrong. Uh, no racial slurs. Okay. Cruz is not Latino. How can Colonel you Pete say Flores that? I'm telling you a fact. He's 100% Cuban. Do not call. Don't it. talk. Don't expect an answer. Stop. Bob, finish up. Colonel Pete Flores has served as the head of Texas Parks and Wildlife for decades, served the people of, of Texas with honor. He came into this race as a virtual unknown and beat not only a former U.S. congressman with 100% name recognition, he also defeated a very popular Hispanic Democrat state representative in this race. He came in first in the initial race and he came in first in the final race because he worked hard to represent the people of this state. He led Parks and Wildlife Game Wardens on the border in doing a very dangerous job in helping to secure this border. He's bringing that hard work to the people of Texas. This is a great race. It's drawing national attention, not just statewide attention. We'll see if it pops up in November. Still ahead, Houston police lock up a solid raise from the mayor they serve. But was the pay hike a slap in the face of firefighters seeking parity with fellow first responders? Our crew dives into the drama when we come back.